God. I feel His Spirit here. We're here to have church this morning, aren't we? We're not going to get in some kind of ritual, are we? No, we're going to worship God. Let Him have His way in our midst. What a wonderful, wonderful God we serve. I'm glad that anchor holds, sustains me, and keeps me in the midst of all troubles and the midst of all situations. You have your Bibles turned with me this morning to the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, and verse 2. It is good to be in God's house this morning. It is good to know that we come together and that the Spirit of God is in our midst. Wouldn't you hate to go to a dead, dry church? Wouldn't you hate to go to a church where there's no love and no fellowship, no care one for another? I thank God that He has richly blessed us with a church that loves one another and where the fellowship and the love and the presence and the anointing and the Spirit of God is in our midst. We're not ashamed to lift our hands, are we? Not ashamed to lift our voice. They go to the ball games, my, they have a time, don't they? I mean, they are fanatical, are they not? Yes, they are. Fanatical. Well, I'm fanatical about my Jesus. I'm a fan of Him. I'm a fan of Jesus and what He's done in my life. Hebrews chapter 2, or chapter 12 and verse 2. I know you say, Brother Doug, you used this verse last week. Well... There's plenty in this verse. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. I want to read it again. I want it to sink in. I want you to hear every word. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy, remember that word, that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of of the throne of God. Flip over with me to the book of St. John, chapter 3. Verses that surely you could quote this morning, and you've heard many, many times, but I want to read them in your hearing this morning. St. John, chapter 3, and verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in Him, should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in Him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. He that believeth on Him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is coming to the world, And men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. I want to preach that the Lord would help me this morning on what are you looking at? What are you looking at? Father, I ask this morning that you would touch us, anointing in the unction of your spirit and of your presence. I ask God that you would help us to speak forth the words that are needed, nothing more and nothing less. Let your word go forth here on the different ministries and let it accomplish all the things that you send it forth to do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. What are you looking at this morning? What are you looking unto this morning? I want you to think for just a moment what I read to you about in St. John chapter 3 
If you would look back some time or another, you don't have to do it now, but Numbers chapter 21, verses 5 through 9, you'll find that the story is given and the story is told about Moses in the wilderness and the serpent upon the pole. The people of God had begun to complain and they had begun to grumble. They had, as it were, began to cast in their teeth to God. They complained against the plan of God. You see, I want to tell you, God has a plan. And there's a lot of people that don't like God's plan. There's a lot of people that try to change it and turn it and twist it and make it mean what they want it to mean or change it around the way they want to change it. That's why if you listen on TV to other ministers, you need to have this book. You need to know this book. It needs to be in your heart and in your life so you'll know that they're not twisting it or changing it the way that they want it changed. But they had rebelled against the plan of God. You see, I'm thankful for the plan of God. I'm thankful that he saw an old boy like me reach down with his amazing grace saved me and made me a part of the family of God. I don't deserve it. I'm not worthy. But I'm thankful for the cross this morning and what he done for me. But the people of God rebelled against God and they desired not only did they complain against the plan of God they began to desire the world. This world has nothing for me. All its riches and its golds I've done seen never satisfy. If you don't believe me, look at man that has it. Are they satisfied? Never. What do they always want? Just a little more. If I can have just a little more and there is nothing in this world worth turning back to. But they began to desire the world. And not only did they complain against the plan of God, and not only did they begin to desire the world, but they refused to trust God. The greatest sin in the church. The greatest sin in the church. But Doug, you talking to the church? Yes, I am this morning. Is unbelief. We don't trust God. Brother David, we don't take what his word says. Brother Hatchel, we don't lean upon the blessed book and trust in thus saith the word of the Lord. Come on. And they began to refuse to trust God. They began to refuse to lean upon him. Because of their sin, fiery serpents were sent among them. Because of their sin, fiery serpents were sent. And as these serpents began to fail, they would bite them and they would die. Now I'll tell you a little bit about myself. I don't like snakes. Never have. Never will like them. I used to have horrible nightmares about them. I'd wake up and, and think it's under my bed or about afraid to step out of bed. Scared of them. But I began to think that's kind of foolish to be scared of something like that. Now don't get me wrong, I'm not going to go handling them. <laughs> And if you come running in here with one, I'm going to find a door. I ain't foolish. I just ain't as afraid as I used to be. And I began to look at them, and we'd go to places, and I'd look at them, and I'd realize they're not as bad as everybody gave them the rap. And if they was to bite you, you could probably get an antidote, and everything would be all right. So my fear has dwindled from there, but I want you to stop and think just a moment. Think about what is happening. The people have rebelled against God. They have turned from the plan of God. And all at once fiery serpents began to come. Now Moses is told what and how to do. It is a very simple plan. There's no isms and schisms and all these other things about it. All it was was to put a brazen or copper serpent on a pole, raise it up, and when people were bitten, they would look at that pole risen up, and they'd be healed. Sounds simple, doesn't it? But I'm going to tell you something. If I was right there in the midst, even though I'm not as fearful of them as I used to be, I'd be looking for higher ground. I wouldn't be turning around looking at no pole. The thing in my mind would be if I'm bitten to try to find some kind of first aid. Try to do something somehow 
to solve the situation. Try to do it. And I would be running around frantically in a panic. Sound familiar? When the plan of God is right there, plain and simple. To look to the serpent and live. We have that today, don't we? You see, the plan of God is so simple that even a wayfaring stranger can find his way therein. But we want to take the plan of God and we want to complicate it. We want to change it all around. We want to make it hard for a man to get to God. But the cross, do you see? This is one of the first signs that we have of the cross. That man would look and because of their trust and their faith in what thus saith the word of the Lord, they would look, they would not run here nor there nor everywhere else trying to find some kind of relief. How horrible it would be to have those fiery serpents around your feet and biting you and all you could do was look. But when they looked and they trusted and they believed, they were healed and delivered. Glory, hallelujah. I'm thankful this morning that the plan of God is true, that it is yea, that is everlasting. If they refuse to look and live, they died in their rebellion and in their sin. But if they would look, they would live. You see, I want to tell you today that if you'll look to Jesus, you'll begin to know what real life is like. There is no life in this world worth living except the life of a child of God. And if you look to Jesus this morning, you'll begin to know what life and living is all about.